And I don't know, I, did you watch the <laughs> video about server components about uh, from uh, Dan Abramov? Um, I did not watch the entire thing, but I read the RFC of uh, React server nice. components. So it's uh, pretty interesting. I mean, of course, we already had React on the server before since many uh, years where you just render like the markup. Um, but then it gets like hydrated on the client um, and you still ship like the whole bundle and the whole logic. Yeah. But this React server component, it is something different, right? Yes, absolutely. Complementary. But just to tie things in with the previous topic we discussed, here again, you know, you have server components, shared components, client components. Your IDE doesn't know anything about these different uh, class of components and, you know, the rules and that they live into two different environments, server and client. And again, here, probably, I don't know. I assume that thanks to now the ESLint TypeScript infrastructure, you can build plugins that, you know, use leverage TypeScript type information so that your IDE can understand these different environments and help you write your code. And if you're new, a newcomer, uh, you know, will statically tell you, you know, if you're doing things wrong and so on. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, server components, yeah, that's, uh, I watched the video, it was pretty impressive. I remember that two years, I think at least, so two years ago or one year and a half ago, uh, I was listening to a podcast of uh, where Dan Abramov was a guest. And he, it's funny because he mentioned already the idea of basically what was presented in the video and even like some really particular use cases that were shown in, in the demo. And um, yeah, that was, I really enjoyed watching that video. That was, that's a game changer. Wow. <laughs> well, so my, my thoughts on this is that, I mean, there's like so many different things you can do with React and like there are already people doing like similar things. If you think about Next.js, Gatsby, yes. Remix and like, of course, there are 100 other frameworks which uh, have not gotten as popular. Um, and really like people do everything with React, but um, it really only becomes popular if they, if the React team actually embraces um, this technology. So I'm always like, you know, about these uh, cycles between server side and client side. So we started with mainframe. So you had a thin client, then we had the personal computer thick client, then we had the internet, the web 1.0, thin client again, and now we do React Native, React, uh, so it becomes a thick client, you load the, and you know, you wonder, okay, how do you, when do you move back to the server and why? And it's interesting that uh, to see this vision, which is more like an hybrid vision where you have now thick and uh, thin client, at the same time, and it's interesting because Adam, Adam Abramov mentioned a couple of times, you know, it's really, you know, now going back to the server side uh, mindset, but still you delivering the same, uh, you know, rich client app on the, on the client. Yeah, and it's like, I think what most tools are trying to do nowadays is to like just deliver static sites and sites that are optimized for search engines. Um, but like this React server component thing, it seems like they have um, taught a lot more about it than just that. Um, so by in traditional frameworks, you hydrate it on the component and you still ship the whole bundle. Um, of course, it's like a Facebook uh, scale problem with their 50,000 components on their uh, web app. They, That's true. Um, not many people have these kinds of problems. So they really thought about how to make it scalable. And I mean, one of the interesting things is that um, they want to strip all the code that is not necessary on the client. Exactly. So not all the code that runs on the server also gets shipped to the client afterwards. Yes. And uh, it's actually a new trend because I don't know if you've seen the news, but also the people at Basecamp, they've released a framework, a framework called Hotwire which is essentially, I mean, completely different paradigm, but basically trying to achieve the same thing. It's called HTML over the wire. It's, it's not funny that, you know, now sending HTML over the wire is like a new innovative thing. You know, we've <laughs> really went full circle, but I mean, I'm, I'm joking, but of course uh, it makes sense. And completely different paradigm, but the goal is the same, is that, you know, to bring this uh, 
to have the best of both worlds and to bring to use the server side mindset to deliver rich clients. And um, yeah, the but anyways, the demo from uh, the React team was absolutely incredible. And um, I saw also a parallel we are uh, with uh, the React hooks announcement, where you know they come in once in a while and they are introducing a completely a complete paradigm shift. And also one uh, parallel I've seen is that these paradigm shift, they bring so many benefits that it's actually almost hard to market and to explain to people because it's such a, suddenly an order of magnitude uh, above what we are used to that uh, it's almost hard to explain to people because it, the shift is so big. And I felt also it was the same um, with server components that the benefits were so big, uh, you know, beyond bundle size and so on, that um, and performance that uh, sometimes they would almost struggle to to explain the benefits, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's probably like hooks. Um, at the at first, it seems I, I'm sure it's like totally genius, but I mean, so so hard to to explain it to the people and then like people coming oh why can't i conditionally render hooks this is so so stupid um nobody asks that question anymore i mean now that people have used it it's like so obvious mm. um but yeah it looks scary at the at first for sure yeah yeah and like all these dependency arrays which they nicely solved using the eslint plugin um was uh, hard at the beginning, but I, mean, I appreciate that they communicate these things so well. They also um, first keep it a bit private, brainstorm, and then once they are ready, they communicate it really well. They make a presentation, they make a video, they make an RFC, and um, through that still manage to, to bring these genius ideas to the people even though of course people will resist change mm. and it sounds like these things will be i'm not sure but it looks like these will be brought to us through third parties right probably next gs or some other types of uh, third party product but let's see right uh, i guess it's still very experimental and they really wanted more to introduce uh, uh, paradigm. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how it's going to develop. Um, if Next.js is going to stick with their system or if they are going to adapt to like the new standard of server components that the React team is uh, trying to push. But what it seems like is that the, this, they want to have the server um, rendered components to like really tie in together with the other features like React Suspense. Um, yes natively so that the React library itself um, glues everything together and makes everything r work really well, which uh, I think the frameworks like Next.js and Gatsby don't really have like access to these APIs. Yes. So there are a couple of uh, things which really impressed me from the video. So first of all, the bundle size, right? So you had like these big libraries, but suddenly they only live on the um, on the server, so which I think is pretty cool. And again, if you have like uh, some business specific libraries, which might be really big, doing lots of uh, uh, fancy computations, and suddenly you have the opportunity to have them to have your rich React app and have them live on the server. That's that's great. Another so two things just coming uh, in my head about what uh, wow me during the presentation is that. You know, for instance, when the server tree re-renders, since, you know, only the, it's not like reloading a new web page. So all the client uh, state stays the same. And so maybe if you have a, a property change from the new server tree, if you have a CSS um, transition on it, it will be triggered. Because it's just you updated basically the attribute, for instance, of an HTML element or something. I thought was pretty cool. And another one which I thought was cool is that apparently, so they load the, the server, so the 
server side tree is uh, streamable. And I think so you load the tree and you can already interact with a component, even though the tree is not fully loaded. And I feel like it's going to prioritize the loading on this particular part of the subtree to make the component interactable quickly. And I thought it was like pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how like how considerate they are of all the things that like happen in the browser and in the network, like uh, CSS transitions and how they like solve problems that like normal like that that the average React user doesn't even like realize is gonna hit them at some point once they scale to thousands of components. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thankful to be in a community where, you know, that is bringing us such uh, nice concepts and paradigms, hooks. So first of all, the component programming model of React, I'm sorry to say it, but game changer. <laughs> this will uh, outlive React for sure. And I think it already did. Uh, and then hooks. So suddenly, you know, realizing that class is actually an awkward uh, model for components and then offering this this paradigm things like server component i'm also uh, thinking about the reanimated api i think i'm just thankful that we're in a communi community where uh, the concepts are so uh, refined and so cool yeah and the thing is like it was like never short-sighted um what they brought to the table so far has always been like so well thought through and since then been validated by millions of developers. Mm -hmm.